Welcome to the Sages Among Us. The true gold in our region lies in the many people who devote countless hours toward the betterment of their communities. Today we're going to hear the personal story of an individual who is deeply engaged in our community and find out about what they give back to this community and hopefully learn ways that we too can make a positive difference. I'm Norm Westmore. And today we're talking with Nate Beeson, Supervisor from District 1. Welcome, Nate. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Great. Well, let's, uh, I'll share a little bit about uh, Nate's background. Uh, he was born in Long Beach, uh, grew up in the San Joaquin Valley. He was a naval officer for 30 years, and he uh, achieved the rank of captain. And he served in eight ships uh, as a commanding officer, uh, and he also served on the commanding two shore activities. Um, and he commanded a seven-ship International Naval Task Force also. He was a veteran of Vietnam and uh, made three deployments to the Middle East in the command of warships. After retiring from the Navy, Nate was a project manager for a uh, computer software installation and uh, also an implementation project. He taught leadership and management skills to executives for five years. He has a BA and a MA from the University of California at Santa Barbara and a master's degree from Stanford. In 1989, he was the Arthur S. Morrow Fellow in International Relations and Diplomacy at Stanford, and he was an adjunct professor at UC Berkeley from 1995 to 1998. No conflict between blue and red there, huh? <laughs> well, I have to confess, I've been a Cal fan all my life. Well, good for you. <laughs> all right, we're going to get along fine. Stanford we're not playing when they're not playing for Cal. Um, he's a life member of the Disabled American Veterans and the University of California Alumni Association. Nate is currently serving his third term as District 1 Supervisor and first elected in 2004. In 2004. Uh, he served uh, three times as board chair, and he also serves on a number of different committees. I'm not going to go through all of those because we want to uh, find out about Nate, so <laughs> otherwise we might hear all about his committees. Um uh, Nate uh, has been married for 50 years to uh, the former Betty Hopkins, and congratulations you. for you. That's wonderful. Uh, they have two children and two grandchildren. Uh, in addition uh, to the enjoying his grandchildren, he likes fly fishing, reading, reading and gardening. Wow. So, Nate, uh, I'd like to start off um, with a question. From the, your time in serving our country in the Navy, um, you've also served uh, the public need. And um, that's what this program is a, a lot about. It's people in our community that lead. And I'd like to find out uh, how you first became involved in, uh, in giving back to the community. Well, we're starting with the Navy. Um, I, I didn't join the Navy to make it a career. <laughs> it was a temporary thing. Yeah, I joined the Navy because I was, it was the, the Vietnam was go, War was going on. Actually, I wanted to be a fighter pilot, and I flunked the physical, so I went to sea. And, but I was found out I was pretty good at as being at being a naval officer. It was interesting. It was challenging. So I stuck around and wound up staying thirty years. It's important what the Navy does. Uh, it's important what the armed forces do. Right. And I'm not talking about necessarily combat activities, but everything. Mm -hmm. And I came from a family that, or I come from a family that um, has always been involved in public service, primarily at the local level, you know, school boards, city councils, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. type of thing. And we just had this attitude that we should get involved. Mm -hmm. And I often wondered if, if I could have made a lot more money in the corporate <laughs> world. But, you know, in the long run, the amount of money you make is not really that important, I don't think. And, right. and then uh, I didn't plan on running for public office, but I wound up, because of a variety of circumstances, running. Yeah. And uh, I didn't plan on doing three terms either. You didn't, you didn't plan on this, uh, <laughs> this uh, tenure or this thing? No, I didn't. No, right. But here, that's where we are today. Well, thank you for, uh, for serving the public. It's yeah. been, uh, it's been uh, 11 years. Um, and uh, was there a person in, in your early life that uh, your parents or someone that was a, was a hero to you? That, uh, yeah, well, there, were, there was more than one. My grandfather was primarily, I guess he was the real male role model. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my, I had a single mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, my father, she, she and my father were separated and divorced when I was about six. And she worked and tried to raise three kids. And, you know, wow. she, 
we were we were we were not the working poor. We were kind of one level above the working right, poor, right. whatever that is. Right. I know we used to race to the bank to get the paycheck in there before <laughs> the other checks arrived, but we made it. But I had a grandfather who was quite a guy, and uh, he he was very unassuming. Uh, you know, I, I have this philosophy that most famous people aren't great, and mm -hmm. most great people aren't famous. Right, and he right. was in the latter category, right. and and there are a lot of people out there right. like that. There are there are a lot of hidden angels, you yeah, know. There are, and he was, and then uh, I had a, had a football coach that I really thought a lot of in high school, and a track coach in college, and a couple of professors, and a couple of mentors in the Navy, and my wife is probably the best role model I've ever had. Wow, that's a great tribute to her. Oh, she's terrific. Yeah, she's the best person I know. <laughs> And she's very tolerant. We've been married 50 years. So. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> uh, you're a work in progress? That's what my wife goes well, I don't know if I'm even at that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, one of the things that we would like to hear uh, over your 11 years, this has been um, a, um, a, some, some pretty difficult times that our county has gone through. And so I'd like your reflections on, uh, on some of the highlights, some of the things you think uh, were uh, achieved uh, with your supervisors and your colleagues. And also, uh, maybe some things that uh, didn't happen that you'd like to have seen happen. Well, I, I uh, you know, when I got elected in 04 and I took office in January of 05, and we were, you know, we were in the boom times. Right. And it didn't take us long to realize that in California, the boom times don't last forever. Right. And so I think one of the things the board has done, and I'm proud to say I was on the budget committees six years out of the times I've been in office, you know, the years, is we didn't just spend all the money. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we mm -hmm. set money aside knowing full well that the time was going to come where we were going to need some sort of a cushion. We didn't know how much it was going to be. And um, lo and behold, you know, we had the housing market collapse right, and the recession. Right, right. And we were able to, uh, I think we set aside about $4 million plus mm -hmm. or minus. In a reserve then. In, a, in our yeah, reserve or fund balance, whatever you want to call it, in the general fund. And that helped us... Um, pay for some things we wouldn't otherwise pay for because the tax revenues, mm -hmm. you know, dropped way off. And local government, we can't raise taxes, you know, like, like, the, like state, the state and the federal. And, nor do we necessarily choose to. Right. And uh, so we were able to keep the government going. We, we uh, had to furlough some people for a couple of weeks a year for a few years. At Christmas time, mm -hmm. which, which they would. This is in the 2008, 2009 uh, period. 2009, 10, 11 in there. Okay. And uh, we're not doing that anymore. Um, and there's pension costs involved. And we, we and we took we made some hard decisions about personnel costs, and we got some good cooperation from our bargaining groups, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the the union folks that mm -hmm. uh, comprise the employees, uh, you know, and and the. Sheriff's Management Association kind of led the way in some things they were willing to compromise on. And, and so together, right, uh, with all these good people we have on the staff at the county, uh, we were able to get through this. And so we're bumping along now. We're, we're not, you know, blooming, but we're better off than we were a few years ago. And we still have a reserve. And, mm -hmm. you know, the future's bright, knowing full well, again, that there will be a recession someday. And guess what? Mm -hmm. We're setting money aside. We're ready for it. And yeah. a lot of people don't don't realize how important that is from because if you don't have a stable platform you can't do much mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. and so we're pretty proud of that yeah. Yeah, for, you know comprehensively there's a whole list of things i think that uh we've done uh, you know core services roads a lot of people don't think roads are very sexy well roads affect just about every right. aspect of life right. and we were ranked six out of 58 counties in the quality of our roads really now, you can find some roads out there and you say, what, we're sixth? <laughs> <laughs> but overall, we are, and it's, you know, a, the, the pavement quality index. And we've worked hard on infrastructure. Our library system, we try to protect them. The state took, uh, cut the library funding about 20 years ago, way back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've got Measure C, and mm -hmm. that's going to expire. And, of course, we're working on extending that. But we've got a great library system, and we've, we've paid attention to it, and we want to protect it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, uh, a good public health organization, a good mm -hmm. environmental health organization. Uh, we've, we've just got a good county organization with a lot of good people. 
I, uh, I want to um, just take a, a, a station uh, announcement here for a moment. But I'd like to come back and talk about rural counties and what they're faced okay. with in funding from external sources. Sure. You're listening to The Sages Among Us on KVMR. Uh, and KCPC. I'm Norm Westmore, and we're talking today with Supervisor Nate Beeson uh, about his uh, experiences with the county and our county government. And uh, this is his uh, last year as serving District 1, and he's reflecting on some of his experiences. Um, Nate, uh, Sometimes we hear about uh, rural counties in, in California and the funding between the, the very populous uh, centers versus the rural and, and how difficult that is. And you you just were talking about uh, the health, the financial health during mm-hmm. the tough times. Um, what is what what goes on in that funding equation from your perspective? Well, about about two thirds of our budget is federal and state money that goes into a variety of programs. Mm-hmm. And then the general fund is about a third of it. Our, our budget's about two hundred million. The general fund's a little over sixty million, and uh, we spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time in Sacramento mm-hmm. uh, trying to educate legislative members about the needs of, of rural areas. And you know, it's it's an urban mentality in in Sacramento. Most of the people who are in the legislature come from the urban areas. Mm-hmm. I think we, I think Northern California, the rural counties, have nine representatives out of. 120. You got 40 in the Senate and 80 in the right. in the Assembly, and it's not that they are trying to neglect us or trying to abuse us. They just don't think about us. Mm-hmm. Right, right. right. <laughs> they're, they're thinking about these, their own constituents. They're thinking about their own constituency. And I was, you know, on the I'm still on the governing board of the rural county representatives of California. There's 35 counties represented. I was a chair for a year, and you know the state still owes us money that they have used to plus up the state budget over the years and we're still working to get some of that money back we've made some successes they still owe nevada county for example about 270 million dollars i'm sorry two hundred and seventy thousand dollars in what we call pilt it's payment in lieu of taxes Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's tax revenues that are lost when the state takes over property like for a wildlife refuge or some other reason all right building And they started paying us going forward. They had stopped all that, but they're, they're paying us there. But we're trying to get the arrears, and statewide, that's about 8 or $9 million for counties. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're Sierra County, for example, right. that's a lot of money. Sure, sure. And so we've had some successes, and you know, we haven't made a frontal assault on them. We've tried to be you know, professional and courteous mm-hmm. and make our argument, and we've done pretty well. We've Right now, our assemblyman, Brian Daly, is a great rep mm-hmm. for – rural counties and he works well with uh, people of the other party people who are from urban areas he educates them a lot Mm -hmm. and brian is having some success and i think you're going to see more and more as we go on i think brian as a matter of fact is going to be a guest uh on our sages program next week he spends a lot of time in nevada county oh that's great and uh, so uh it's 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 something that we we pay attention to on a continuous basis i mean we we have to watch what's going on down there uh we didn't like this uh this fire tax that we got hit mm-hmm, with. We mm-hmm. didn't think that was fair. We've been battling that. We haven't had much success so far, but at least, you know, Cal Fire appreciates our problem, and they weren't the ones that drove that. Mm-hmm. That money was taken to, to plus up the general fund. Oh, okay. The governor did that. Right, right. So it was removed from Cal Fire. Yeah, just took money out of Cal Fire, put it in the general fund, and then put a tax on... Uh, areas that are in the state responsibility areas, which is primarily rural right. areas. Right. I'd like to to direct that question that rural that question about the rural counties, and and we 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 talked a little bit about the quality of uh, our county staff. Mm-hmm. And my my experience has been that they they're they're really great. Um, I work in the nonprofit area, as you probably know, and as a volunteer. Uh, tell us about a little bit about the difficulty in keeping quality people here because they've got other alternatives. Uh, well, they do. Uh, and the good news is we keep quality keep people here. The, the bad news is we've lost some quality people. Uh-huh. Uh, we've been able to replace them, but, you know, as we were talking earlier, we're right next hard by Placer County. Right. Placer County is, is a bigger county, a richer county, mm-hmm. and you can live in Nevada County and work in Placer County. Right. And we've had people go to work there because they have better opportunities in terms of salary and maybe more responsibility. But uh, by and large, we're doing a pretty good job. We've, mm-hmm. we've lost some good people. We've been able to replace them uh, through 
uh, recruiting from outside or bringing people up in the system. And we've got a good succession management program. Mm -hmm. And the credit for that goes to Rick Haffey, the CEO, and Allison Lehman, uh-huh. the assistant CEO, and and then uh, Charlie Wilson, who's the HR director. Okay. And I'm leaving some people out. But <laughs> of course, there's a lot of them That's there. always the risk. But right. they have done a great job. That's great. Uh, yeah. and to, to, keep, to retain those, to retain those people. people and, and invite others in. And try to find ways to keep them here yeah. without you know impinging on the taxpayers too much. Right, right. So right. It, and it's working so far. Good. That's good news. We that's can't good. compete with L.A. and San Francisco. I was going to say, no. That's... Who wants to live there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you're invited to uh, join this conversation. Uh, if you have a question uh, for Supervisor Beeson uh, or something like that you'd like to share uh, of your own experience with civic engagement, give us a call at KVMR 530-265-9555. Uh, one of our uh, personnel will take your question and we will direct that question to uh, Supervisor Beeson. His service in the Navy and also as a supervisor, he's been a great public official. We appreciate that greatly. But I, I want to ask. Okay, uh, to- uh, this is Keith asking a question now. <laughs> okay, Keith, would you start over again? We, we, yeah. uh, we missed your, the opening to your question so that Supervisor Beeson can hear that. All right. Well, first, I want to say thanks to Nate for his service in the Navy and as a supervisor, a great uh, public official. We're going to miss him uh, on the board. But I wanted to ask him about the trend. It seems there's so little being done in Washington that there's more and more responsibilities falling on local governments to to get things done and to start new initiatives and so forth. I wonder if he thinks that's a good thing and, and how that's affecting Nevada County. Go ahead, Nate. Hi, Keith. Hi, Nate. <laughs> uh, it's... It is a good thing, and it's not so good. I mean, if, if our concern, you know, we, we are, we're always trying to protect local authority and local control, and we've done a pretty good job so far. And you, you, if you're paranoid, you can think the people in, the, in Sacramento and Washington stay awake at night trying to figure out ways to grab local control. They don't. But uh, we spend a lot of time in Washington lobbying as well as we do in, in Sacramento, and We want them to understand that rural counties, not just in California, but everywhere, uh, are not the same as Los Angeles. And, for example, uh, our roads, for example, are dangerous because they're darker at night. They're curvier. The topography is different. So, you know, we think that proportionally uh, we should get more road funding. And so far we've been successful, but Mm -hmm. it's it's taken a lot of work. Uh, Our forests are burning up. Uh, We don't want to cut down all the trees, but we think, maybe we should have more uh, fuel treatment in the public public forests. And, you know, we're making some headway there. It's not happening as fast as we'd like. Uh, and and uh, we try to educate them as best we can. I go to Washington every year with a group of people who, you know, we make the rounds and we talk about payment in lieu of taxes. There's a federal pilt, like I was talking about right. earlier, as well as a state pilt. So, We want to keep local control. We know that strings come with most federal money, but we just want them to treat us fairly and pay pay their debts. You know, if they've got to balance their budget, they need to figure out how to do that without doing it at our expense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not on our backs. Right. (laughs) I don't know if that answers your question or not. Thanks, Keith. you know, as you as you look, we've we've looked back at your at your career uh, in public service on uh, in our county. Uh, let's take a moment and look forward and and look at some of the things that you see emerging as as key uh, issues that we need to wrestle with. Well, let's talk about e- economic development first of all. And I'm not an expert by any stretch, but you know, historically we've had two major industries in Nevada County: timber and and mining. Right. Well, they're not here. I mean, in any any real serious form or fashion for a variety of reasons. Uh, and we need to try to, we need an economy that's self-sustaining. Mm-hmm. Tourism is important, but that's, I don't think that's the answer. I think tourism is kind of icing on the cake. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of the major breakthroughs we've had was John Paul's, uh, the grant he's getting for the uh, Bright Fiber Network right. uh, internet project that's going to go forward. Mm-hmm. That will have a, uh, uh, some serious positive in- implications on just about every aspect of life in Nevada County. And phase one is going to go coincidentally in my district, and it wasn't rigged this way. You sure now? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Believe me, this, this is a big, much bigger than I am. Uh, although I'm glad to say that I helped lobby for it. And, and then we'll have phase two and three. 
uh, and try to meet the needs of people that have small businesses at home. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, right. We've got some places in the Br- Brunswick Basin that still uh, don't have the speed they need. And then there's right. a lot of houses, that uh, residences that could be connected that will give them more of an education uh, capability with kids. And, and, and it just goes on and on, health and everything else. And uh, this... Uh, uh, this digital media campus at the ERC right. is putting in down on uh, Gold Flat, Mo- New Mohawk. Right, I think is a start. And I hope it works. Right, uh, but that's where we've got to focus a lot of effort. But I think we're moving forward in the right direction after some years of spinning our wheels. Um, small thing in my district. And what what do you see uh, as uh, how county government can? Um, uh, well, we're, that and, and we're, supplement it. We're the biggest benefactor to the ERC. Mm-hmm. The, the county uh, grants one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to the Economic Resources okay. Council, and the private sector puts in some, and the cities put in some. But we are, we we. So your seed money for that for over government. half of it, yeah, and we put another fifty grand in uh, for this digital media campus, but we can't do that forever. Mm-hmm. What, what I would like to see is it becoming self-sustaining, where the private sector is mm-hmm. is pushing it. Right. Is that right. going to happen in right. the near future? No, but uh, so that that's primarily where where we can help. The, the biggest, the, the the most significant impact government can have at the local level is creating an environment, good roads, mm-hmm. okay, high speed internet. You know, making it uh, not easy, but removing impediments to getting that okay. fiber in the ground, for right. example. Uh, having a fire department that shows up, having a, a police department or a sheriff's department mm-hmm. that's competent, all these things. Strong right. education. It, yeah, think? good schools. Uh, a junior college maybe that's got some programs that feed right into the types of jobs mm-hmm. that are available in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, we can go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But I think we're heading in the right direction. It's it's We're not going to be the Silicon Valley right off the bat. Right. In fact, we're never going to be the Silicon Valley, but I think we can create this uh, – you know this this core that's that's going to mm-hmm. attract move people us forward right. and and all the other thing will other things and that doesn't mean we don't need ag there's a lot of ideas about ag mm-hmm. agrotourism uh sustainable agriculture movement mm-hmm. that's going on uh i think ag has got a lot of potential mm-hmm. is it going to be a, a big chunk of the economy bigger than it is probably not the biggest mm-hmm. uh the wine industry is doing very well and we need to promote that and we try to help them as mm-hmm. best we can uh, arts are important right and all of these things uh, work together, and uh, there's just never enough money. That's the problem. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But but I think I think uh, we're moving the right. But but government is going to have to provide infrastructure, sewer, water, all those things that you know don't get people fired up. <laughs> but if you don't, they're not too them, glamorous. No, but, but if you don't have them, they get right, you fired up. Right. Well, you mentioned the arts too, and yeah. this community has a tremendous. Um, it's amazing um, uh, arts uh, that uh, are attractive to people that come right. up here and says I'm not going to a cultural wasteland. Right? We couldn't believe it when we moved here. Yeah, it's I mean, really it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, that's great. I don't have enough time to go all the all the stuff that goes on. Okay. All right. Um, let's uh, let's talk for a moment. Uh, you you talked about some of the accomplishments um, and looking back. Uh, some of the things that you would like to have seen achieved that uh, didn't happen that um, might be a disappointment. I'm not going to call them uh, mistakes, but well, well, I, <laughs> goals made, maybe not no, achieved. I've made a couple mistakes. I'm not going <laughs> to. I mean, I'm a human being. <laughs> well, there was a road issue back right after I got into office that went a certain direction at the time I thought I was right, and I was wrong. Uh-huh. I'm not going to mention the name of the road, but we, we made a mistake on how the – you know, certain private roads are offered up for dedication into the county <laughs> right. system, and we declined to accept it. And had we done that, looking back, uh, we would have solved a lot of problems that came along later that were a lot harder to solve as a result. Uh, I'm disappointed that I haven't resolved the Cascade Shores wastewater treatment plant issues, mm-hmm. but there's hope. I've got uh, We've got some things working in Sacramento where we think we're going to be able to reconfigure that plan up there and stabilize the rates and then over time lower the rates. Mm-hmm. And, and we've got some encouragement here just recently. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go – I don't like to – I don't want to get people's expectations up. But I'm – right. after all – you know, I've been working on this now for about eight years. Mm-hmm. And we've had – we've run into a lot of brick walls. And right. And it's taken a lot of hard work, a lot of determination, a lot of time. And it's also taken the change of a couple of personalities in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'm still 
uh, hopeful about that, although I wish we had done it before now. Okay. So there's a couple of things. All right. Uh, the courthouse. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we need a new courthouse in, mm-hmm. in this county. And uh, I am at a point now where I think we need to stop worrying about whether it's got the right kind of facade, um, for example, and just go to the state and say, we need a courthouse. Let's sit down and let's figure out how we're going to do this. Because what gets lost in this whole discussion are the people that work there. Mm-hmm. You know, We need to make their jobs we need to make that environment better for them so they can be more efficient and more effective. Right. And I, and I think you know, we've been kind of spinning our wheels on that. Right. So we need to move forward. Now, that was a study uh, uh, program. They're going to do an assessment of that, right, at one right. point. Is that still is that still on the table? Well, or is the, it? the city of Nevada City hired some people to do that. I haven't seen the results yet. Okay. Uh, but I, I just think that we need to – we're not even on, on the map yet. We used to be, but we're not anymore. And I think we we tried to – to put too many preferences on it, oh, and yeah. bureaucrats have a tendency to choose the path of least resistance. Right. And right. guess what? They guess did. what? They, there's too many, too many things in the bucket. Yeah. Huh? So this is too hard. <laughs> Give me something that's, easy. That's here. not just in the public sector. But oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, uh, it's in our, our closing minutes here. Um, as you look um, kind of in, uh, ahead, if you had a magic wand, uh, and it would be one thing that you'd like to see happen um, in the future here. I think fire safety is a constant high priority. You know, the board has, we've passed regulations for vegetation management uh, to give the fire departments, you know, more authority, not more authority, but more options to right. enforce. Uh, we need to do more. Uh, our circula- circulation system needs to be improved. You know, people move here, they People develop something, they want to put up a gate. We've got to stop that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, f- you know, fire safety is an issue that's with us all the time. Right, right. And I think that uh, we can do better. I think we have too many fire departments, quite mm-hmm, candidly. Okay. We've got one sheriff and eight or nine fire chiefs. I'm not sure <laughs> that's necessarily the right, way to go. Right. And, and I'm not beating up the fire right, way to go. Right. And, and I'm not beating up the fire departments. Those guys do a great job. Sure. But I think they're kind of Might hamstrung more, with more like the way that we're structured here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there's a couple of areas. The drought is an issue. Uh, I'm hoping this is the first year of a normal year. Right. But even if this year is a normal year, we're still going to have some impacts. Because, right. you know, the groundwater's got to recharge. We've got d- trees that are dying, and then we're going to have trees keep dying for a while. Sure, sure. And, th- and we've got to deal with that. And there's, mm-hmm. n- there's not enough money. Um, and it turns into a safety issue. Sure it so. does. Nate, I want to thank you for your service to your country uh, and the service to our community. Um, you've been a great example, and we appreciate so much your leadership uh, and your dedication and, and being a role model for many. Uh, thank you. Well, I, I try to do yeah. as best I can. Thank, thanks. Thank gonna, you for saying gonna, that. I yeah. appreciate it. Great. This show is an outgrowth of the research project that led to the book, The Sages Among Us, Harnessing the Power of Civic Engagement. If you'd like to learn more about how you can make a difference or learn more about the project, go to cnlsierra.org or call 530-265-5600. I'm Norm Westmore. You've been listening to The Sages Among Us, and our guest tonight has been Nate Beeson, Supervisor 1, Supervisor District 1.